the uh, he really was. Uh, some people thought he was a did the coon hunting because uh, um, it was popular, you know, and, and and half of the people out in this area were uh, possum hunters, coon hunters, and so forth. But he had he had a great love for his dogs, and he spent I think half his time instead of promoting his whatever fifteen big supermarkets. He'd get on this program in the morning and talk half of the time about a, a coon hound had been lost somewhere. And uh, he, he's a sort of a, psycho, a psychologist. And he said, now, now we know who's got that dog. That we know exactly where that dog is. But we don't want to cause trouble in the community. And if you want to bring that dog down to somebody's, uh, or turn him loose, or he'd have a certain place to put him in. You want to turn him loose down at, at, at Jake Lau's house tonight? Uh, there's nobody. There'll be no questions asked. So, uh, and he would scare them. Uh, now, if you don't bring him in, then we're going to bring the law on you. And if we have to go to that trouble, we're going to put you under the jail. So he liked the dogs, and he liked to trade in them. As they liked to trade in um, in horses and mules and so forth. But uh, he he wanted. He got to thinking in his older days about those dogs that he had loved so much, you know, and he talked about them as if uh, they were his children. And by the way, he only had one one child, and she died uh, young, and he had, uh, I think, one or two of his grandchildren died uh, tragically, and uh, his uh, nephew that was going to maybe take over the business passed on early in life. So these dogs were you know, his children. So he decided he wanted to do something for them because, well, first of all, three of them had saved his life, he said, down in the swamps of Georgia because they got stranded and it gets pretty chilly down there in November and December. And he had one hound on each side of him, one on top, spent the night, and he, as I say, that kept him from freezing to death. But uh, he had Mr. Abston, who was the same age as Caswell, to uh, paint, uh, to draw, uh, uh, put a tombstone up for each of his dogs on this big uh, mural. And um, Cage would stand there and tell him, you know, uh, each one he wanted a little different uh, because uh, that's old um, loudmouth and that's old something. And he's got them all. And he, amazing, he remembered ever how many there are. It must have been 50. And... Uh, he remembered where he got them and how long he kept them and who he traded them to and so forth. So it, the point is that it wasn't just business, all business. Uh, any Anything that he became involved in uh, became a, sort of an obsession to do it and do it right. Of course, some people would point out that it so happened, just so happened, that everything he did uh, was economically profitable uh, even, you know, the, if, a, if a house burned and the family was destitute, he'd get on the <clears throat> television and raise enough money and uh, get enough clothes and appliances to put them back in business. Well, who can say whether he did that uh, because of his empathy for those people or because it was good for business? I would, cho I would, I would choose to think that he did it because he really uh, wanted to help. Because in my case, uh, he helped me tremendously for years and years, and uh, I don't know that he got any any benefit in in any form from what he did for what he did for me. How much time we have, Mr. Anderson? We've got five minutes. All right, <laughs> let's get back to the painting. Uh -huh. You're going to tell me about. Mr. Arston, is that the name of the painter? Uh, Abston. Abston. <laughs> I did tell you that. How we end up with the, the, the controversy of Kaz, there was some controversy about how yeah. Mr. Abston executed the three dogs' life saving story. Yeah, <clears throat> Kaz uh, had told this story many times that, uh, about uh, these three of his favorite dogs. He called them dogs rather than hounds. Most people call them hounds. They were coon hounds. So uh, for some reason they got uh, stranded in the swamp and as my grandfather would say night overtook them. 
That's what my grandfather would say when he's telling these bear stories and everything. And I, I knew when night overtook them, they were heading for trouble. So night overtook them out there in this slump, and the cave was uh, uh, cold, chilly, wet. And he had these uh, boys with him, young men, I guess. So they got the, uh, a dog at Cage's suggestion to put one on one side of him and one on the other. Uh, and, of course, the dogs were getting heat from, it was a reciprocal kind of thing. And then they put this one big hound on top of him. Well, he wanted Mr. Abson to paint that. Well, Abson did the best he could. And Cass came in to inspect it, and he was he was furious. He said, "He said, Mr. Abson, you can't see me. He said all all I can see is the dogs." And Abson said, "Well, Cass, if we put a dog on each side of you, close up, and one on top, how am I gonna uh, how am I gonna do that?" I said, "I can't paint so you can see through the dogs." And uh, Cass said, "said that that's not right." And, so Abson grabbed his brush and painted over the thing, and then he uh, painted the three dogs sitting separately, you know, and Kay's liked that a little better, I guess, but uh, he didn't, uh, he wasn't one to be uh, shy about taking credit and, and uh, so forth. He uh, 